Okay, okay, okay. Maybe a little overkill. You know, maybe a little overkill, but you know, hey, you gotta add some spice to it every once in a while. You get some sweet stuff going on. Well, today, trying to get the vlog out. Uh, guys, disregard the wind. I'm struggling a little bit trying to figure out different options. I even got the cattail and everything on the speaker. But just being in Chicago, Kiowa, you got those winds, it just blows everywhere. And I'm trying my best to, to avoid, you mean, that, that sound of the wind. the outdoor living. People who know me probably don't know, but I went through a stint of selling cars for a while. I worked at two locations in Columbus, Ohio, and then when I moved here to Chicago, I sort of had a job for like three weeks. I mean, I obviously uh, having a job wasn't probably the best thing for me, but I tried. Well, anyway, while I was at one of the, the jobs, um, this wholesaler came in. I, if I'm not mistaken, but this goes way back. I can't believe I remember names. His name was Randy was his name and he was a wholesaler. So what happened is if we bought a car, or we took a car out on trade that we weren't necessarily going to sell or it wasn't something that fit the quality uh, or it just wasn't something our sales managers wanted to put on the lot, we would call Randy up, he would give us some numbers for the car and he'd come and pick it up. He was basically a wholesaler. He'd put it on the auction or he had friends or something like that who buy it and that's how he made money all day long. Well, I remember Randy came in one day and he was excited. I mean, he was smoking excited. He came in and he was excited because he, he just had bought like this two door Mercedes Benz. I really don't know the name, but it was like this banging car. I mean, it was off the chain. And he was happy because he bought it for like $70,000. It had like 6,000 miles on it. It was a year and a half old. And he bought it for like 70 grand. And he was smoking pump. I'm thinking $70,000 for a used car, bro? And you excited? Well, the reason why he was excited was the car retailed for $138,000 and he bought it for $70,000. Think about that. $138,000 and he buys it for $70,000. And the thing about it, the significant part about that and what I'm going to explain to you guys today is it was the value. Think about how much money that car lost. I mean, that was $60,000 that car went down in a year. around trying to get a video of like the fall leaves and stuff like that you guys know it's one of my favorite times of the year is getting that fall stuff I sort of waited but the weather has been really funny here like some days I've been said I was gonna go out and try to get it it's been raining like crazy I think we had the most rain like the past four or five years in Chicago uh, last month then it rained again so now um, all the trees are pretty much bare <music> And the reason why I brought that up with Randy is I think about outdoor living. One of the biggest uphill battles that I have actually as a designer, I gotta be honest with you, it's frustrating as hell. As a designer, it's value. You know, no matter where I go, where I am, if I'm traveling, if I'm at a store or if I'm at a friend's house and somebody asks me about, you know, what do you do? Well, how much value does that bring? You know, I almost want to say, my, I can't really cuss on here on the vlog, but you almost want to say, listen here, MFA, it don't have nothing to do with the value of the property. It has something to do with the value of your lifestyle and what you're going to do. You, you mean, you mean to tell me you're the same person who goes out, I mean, any car, let's not even take a Mercedes or anything. You go out and buy like a Taurus, let's call it a Taurus, and you spend, let's say, $25,000 on a Taurus. Within four years, that, especially a Taurus too, I, I, if you're a Ford Taurus driver, I'm not talking about you. I just know that sometimes they could be pretty, pretty rough cars to maintain over time. But anyway, over time, the car is only worth $6,000. So say you pay $25,000 for it, and then in four years later, after putting all the fuel, gas, maintenance, oil change, tires, and everything on it, brakes and repairs and maintenance, because you probably got a lot of that if you got a Ford Taurus, brakes, repair, maintenance, things like that, you are around $19,000 that you either lost or gained or some type of value you got on that car. So you mean to tell me putting a $45,000 outdoor living space in your backyard can be value prohibitive or cost prohibitive on what you're gonna get back? because the stories and a lifestyle and how you're gonna live with your friends and family and everybody coming over for grill events and things like that, that's gonna be way more value than you think about what your home value is gonna be after five, six years by spending $45,000 in the backyard. So I gotta be honest with you guys. The thought 
of trying to financially get money back off of that piece, the value added piece, it's almost asinine to even think about it. I mean, really, we really got to change the tone on outdoor living and how we think about home values and things like that. You've wasted a ton more money uh, on a bunch of other things other than wasting it on your outdoor living. And I tell you now, if you get a nice outdoor living space designed well with the right materials, the right stuff, and the right, right tools and the right people to put it in, not, not this paver patio stuff. I mean a correct outdoor living, you get that right, you're not going to be worried about getting value back or money back when you sell the house. Hey, thanks for watching and we're elevating the outdoor living.